Howdy everybody, welcome back to Nancy Drew Mobile Mysteries Shadow Ranch. We're gonna climb aboard the hay wagon cause, as that triangle shows, it is definitely time for the cookout. Welcome to Shadow Ranch. Actually, somebody told me I could make the text even bigger so it's easier for all you people at home to read the text. Once everybody climbs aboard, the wagon heads for the cookout site about a half mile up a path leading into the mountains. As they ride to the site, the sun begins to settle into the horizon and the first evening stars begin to appear. Down by the glowing fire pit, the Raleigh's introduce the lively middle-aged ranch cook, Mrs. Thurmond, and her helper, a portly cowboy in his late forties named Shorty. This is Shorty here. Welcome to Shadow Ranch. After lining up at the serving table, the guests sit down and enjoy the barbecued pork ribs, corn on the cob, baked beans, and coleslaw the cooks had been preparing all afternoon. As they eat, the three other girls, I mean the three girls, introduce themselves to the other guests. Dallas and Bonnie Kreider, a friendly retired couple from Nebraska. Jim and Jamie Wallace, a young couple from the Chicago area. And Suzanne Lemaire, a delicate-looking woman in her early 40s from Anchorage, Alaska. But it's the cowboys that Bess most wants to meet. That one's got the most amazing brown eyes, she whispers, nodding towards the young man sitting across the fire pit from them. Yes, but unfortunately for you, George observes, they've been riveted on Nancy for the last ten minutes. Oh, they have not, Nancy protests. But when she glances at the cowboy, Nancy discovers that he is indeed staring at her. Embarrassed, he lowers his eyes. That one looks promising, Bess, George says, pointing to a heavy-set cowboy with a ruddy complexion. He reaches into a bowl of potato chips and stuffs a handful into his mouth. He likes junk food almost as much as you do. Very funny. The moon shines brightly on the mountains in the distance. As the chilly night air closes in on the campfire, the girls pull on the sweaters and down vests they had wisely packed. When everyone is done eating, Uncle Ide gets to his feet and addresses the group. Before they head on out, I'd like to introduce the cowpokes you'll most likely run into during your stay. That's Tex. Looking every bit as gruff and unfriendly as before, the cowboy stands up briefly. He's my foreman. When it comes to the horses and who's riding what, he's got final say. And next to him is Dave. Hello, Nancy. The young man with the brown eyes stands up self-consciously. He steals a glimpse of Nancy and promptly sits back down. And over there's Chet, Ed points to the potato chip eater. And that's Lester, the cowboy wearing the running shoes, nods. And that's Gil. A sandy-haired cowboy holding up a rolled-up rope with a loop at the end tips his hat in greeting. Rumor is there's no mosquitoes around here because Gil lassoed them all with his lariat. The cowboy grins and twirls his lasso over his head. And there's our rootin' tootin' cowgirl, Eunice. Her dark hair pulled back in a long ponytail, the woman curtsies daintily, then sits back down with a wink and a grin. Dave's definitely the cutest. Bess whispers. One more thing, Uncle Ed suddenly remembers. We're short on firewood, so if somebody would volunteer to collect an armful right now before it gets too dark, it would sure be a big help. Okay, I have to be honest, everybody. That was a lot of characters. That was like five characters in the space of a minute. I, I am not going to be able to remember all those characters. And of course, I am going to volunteer to find the firewood, because I'm a nice person. Firewood, firewood, firewood. It's another challenge where you just have to find all the pieces of wood on the screen and then tap on them. Yay! You found all of the hidden objects, and as a reward, as a reward, you get the Tin Star Collectible. Uncle Ed smiles gratefully as Nancy dumps the wood she's gathered beside the fire. Thank you, Nancy. To show my gratitude, I hereby award you the official Shadow Ranch Star of Service. The guests clap. 
as, with a flourish, he pins a tin star on her vest. Okay, so now you have a choice. You can roast marshmallows, make popcorn, or eat some chocolate. What you want to do is choose marshmallows or chocolate. That way, you can get the chocolate collectible. The Coco Kringle collectible, delicious Coco Kringle. Who wants some chocolate? Nancy asks animatedly. Everyone cheers. Hooray! As she shares her secret stash of the delicious creamy milk chocolate bars. Coco Kringle! Dave laughs. It's Cowalicious! Mmm, Mrs. Kreider says, her mouth full of chocolate. Nothing like the rich, dark, velvety taste of a Wickford Coco Kringle. I just love them! Shorty cries. After everyone eats their fill of Coco Kringles, Mrs. Thurman and Aunt Bet pack up the pickup truck and drive back to the ranch. Well, I'd best be going myself, Lester the running shoe clad cowboy says as he dumps his coffee into the campfire. Taint the way we do things around these parts, Tex growls. Maybe cowhands have free reign in Black Creek, but over here we go out together, we come in together. Easy on him, Tex, Shorty intervenes. I hear he's got a big date in Tumbleweed. That's why he's wearing them fancy shoes. All of the cowboys laugh, but Tex remains unmoved. Oh, go on, Lester, keep your date, Dave says. Just be sure to clear things like this with Tex in the future. Well, tell you what, Dallas Kreider says as he gets to his feet. In his hand is a strange-looking flashlight. I'm going to go look for scorpions. Scorpions. Only 25 out of the 1,000 species of scorpions are dangerous to humans. Interesting fun fact. Okay, I'm going to go look for scorpions. Anybody who wants to do the same is welcome to join me. Now why would anyone want to do that, Shorty says, pulling his guitar from his case, when they could stay put and enjoy a little sing-along with yours truly? There's a cave full of bats just a little ways from here, Dave offers quietly. If anybody's interested, I could take you over there. It's really something to see him take off and leave for the night. Suzanne, the woman from Alaska, speaks up as she scans the starlit sky in awe. We should be stargazing on a night like this. She points to a very bright star in the south. Why, just look how well you can see Sirius. At this time of year, and at this time of night, it's so low in the sky in Alaska you can hardly see it in there. Of course, nighttime comes much earlier where I'm from, too. I think stargazing is a great idea, announces Uncle Ed. In fact, I've got my telescope and a guide to the constellations right here. So what should you do next? Do you want to look for scorpions with Dallas, sing songs with Shorty, go see bats with Dave, or do you want to stargaze with Uncle Ed? I think once again, I'm not going to make a decision. I'm going to let you guys, the viewers, decide. Just... Post comments to this video letting me know which uh, option I should pick, and in the next video I will choose the option which seems most popular.